So Blackmagic definitely has dropped bombs on this one with the announcement of the Pixis, which everybody I know is excited about. But that wasn't the first camera that they announced. They announced two other cameras that I think I know a lot of people are sort of little sort of put back based on the price. But I think once more people get this hands on, this is going to be uh, the camera I think that's going to rattle the industry. And if you don't know what I'm talking about yet, I'm talking about the Ursa Cinema 12K as well as the Ursa Cinema 17K. So today I'm going to go over them. I'm going to give my thoughts and sort of uh, where do I think this is taking Blackmagic 2 and why I think these cameras are going to be industry shakers. What's good, everybody? My name is James Jackson. If you're new here, I do tips, tricks, news, and reviews for the film and video making industry. So if this is content that you like, definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button or hit that bell so you can stay up to date on all the content going forward. So we have gotten so much products from Blackmagic. I've already made my video on Pixis. If you haven't seen that video, definitely check it out. I'll leave it up here as well in the description below. But today we're going to talk about the two other cameras, which I think... In terms of the uh, terms of something that is really going to shake up the industry, that's I think it's going to be we're going to see more of these cameras moving forward in Hollywood and higher end productions, and also sort of a breakdown of these new cameras. But first, so let's first start off with the first camera that they announced, which was the Ursa Cinema 12K. That's so weird to say, Ursa Cinema 12K. I'm gonna just call it the Ursa Cinema camera. But essentially, this is a redesign, a retelling of the Ursa line. They've completely changed up the body and really built a really, truly professional high-end camera. And this was sort of what I think myself, as well as a lot of the YouTubers who were following leading up to NAB, was expecting Blackmagic to announce. And it was pretty much essentially what I said in my video of what I expected. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. But it was also more than that. So let's talk about some of the highlight features. Number one, this is, of course, a 12K uh, camera, just like before. And, but it is now a full-frame, large-format camera versus Super 35. And it's not only just full-frame versus Super 35, it is a 3 by 2 sensor that sh lets you shoot open gate. And you, of course, you can downsample from 12K to 8K or even downsample to 4K without cropping in on the image. And if you've never shot with an Ursa 12K before, you could do that with the Super 35. What makes it so different than a lot of its competitors is that when you go down to these lower resolutions like 8K and 4K, you not only get higher frame rates, but the rolling shutter actually gets significantly better. And a lot of this has to do with the sensor technology that they're using, which is not typical. Most of the cameras that you see use CMOS sensors. This is an RGB, this is an RGBW. Is it an RGBW or RGW? But they're using a essentially a brand new type of sensor. I don't know if this is something that they've manufactured themselves or this is a third party that has made it for them that they have purchased off the shelves. And because it has more of those colors, it actually allows you when you go down to take in pretty much getting the same colors in various resolutions without go drop in resolution. It's essentially still having the same pixels and same amount of uh, information. So it allows you black magic to basically not uh, have to crop in, which everybody that has shot RAW is one of the big downsides on every other camera outside of, say, the Ursa 12K cameras, where you could shoot RAW and then sh downsample to 8K and not lose any uh, coverage on the image. And now we get that in a 3x2 full-frame camera, which I am super excited about. The other thing is the complete and total change of the I.O. ports. We're now getting high capacity Ethernet ports, so and it has its own wireless uh, receiver, so you can actually go and basically connect to Blackmagic Cloud and put things up to the cloud directly. There's just so many different things 
that just makes this thing a production beast of a camera. And I love the fact that, the, again, the mount is modular. Now, it doesn't have the L mount, but in, in exchange of not having the L mount, you do get built-in ND filters. Not only built-in ND filters, this one has an electronic ND filter, which is, a ver which is different than what they've had before. But the one thing that I'm definitely excited about with this one is the fact that with we finally got an Ursa camera that has a fully articulating screen. So you can fully tilt the, the screen forward so you can see yourself, and then you can lay it flat so you can have the side, so I have it on the side for your camera operator. And what's also cool is there's another screen on the other side that also has straight, that also has like focus markings where it, it actually connects feet. Now, obviously this isn't gonna work with a lot of the manual focuses because they don't, uh, especially PL, that don't have those smart, uh, cook smart uh, uh, points. This could be something that we could see in sort of like the EF glass where you got the electronics you can send there so it can actually talk. So this is going to be really curious. I especially am curious to see how this will work compared to with something like the DJI Focus. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to send those data and that information. So basically you can basically do an auto calibration of the, of the lens so you can actually get uh, autofocus with LiDAR technology. Now, of course, they have changed. There's two major changes that they've made that are not necessarily definitely entry level friendly. The first one is the battery. Uh, it's because it takes 26 volts, so you need a BPU style battery setup in order for it to work. Uh, again, this is something that is going to be offering like high capacity cameras, so you're shooting high resolution and high frame rates, very, very you know, tight. So, that takes a lot of data, it takes a lot of processing power. So BPU style batteries are going to be needed. The other change that they made is the change of media. Well, at least for this initial one, they're using M.2 uh, M ME uh, media, which capacity, and apparently they're gonna have one with an eight terabyte storage. So, which makes sense given the amount of data that you're gonna need, that's going to help and then they're also coming with a whole docking system that you will be able to use with it. Uh, again, I think it's also quite expensive for that as well. Um, and I'll just also, I guess we should just go ahead and talk about the price, which is $15,000, which I know a lot of people is going to be like, ooh, ooh, no, no, no. And I get all that, but when you start looking at the specs, what it offers and what it's capable of doing, and then you look at what it's actually comparing itself to. It's comparing itself to cameras like the Sony Burano, the Red V Raptor, the Ari Alexa 35, the Sony Venice. That, those are cameras that, that, that this camera is competing. And if you look at every single one of them, they're significantly more expensive just for the body alone, for all of those cameras, compared to the price of this one. I mean... The, the ability to, and you're getting the ability to shoot raw. Not only you get to shoot raw, you can still go to an external monitor and record ProRes externally as well. So the options vary, in the, which gives you so many different cool options. And then you talk, look at the abilities. With you know, the Red V Raptors, they're 17 by nine sensors. It's wider than this camera, but it's also not as tall. And this gives you, so this camera is way more friendlier with anamorphic, various forms of anamorphic options versus something like the, something like the Red V Raptor or even the Burano, which has a three by two sensor, but Sony basically has blocked it out, probably going to have it as a paid upgrade for, uh, for a former upgrade. Hopefully that is not the case. And again, Rolling shut, and then you look at something like the Ari Alexas and the Sony Venices. Uh, this camera shoots higher resolutions than all of them. It offers a lot of more higher frame rates than these cameras do. This is a very intriguing camera that's really going to shake up. I think it's going to entice a lot of people, especially given the fact that it is a 16-bit linear camera and also has 16 stops of dynamic range. Now, if you saw my previous video with Pixis, you know I said... 13 stops, something like 13 stops is already plenty enough. 
But again, this is a camera that is competing with those cameras. Not, it's not in the fighting with the same category as what the Pixis is offering. And then, of course, there was another camera that they announced, which was a 17K sensor. Now, a lot of people are already going, oh my gosh, why do you need 17K? Why do you need 12K? Nobody needs that. Nobody shoots that. You're all right. Nobody is shooting on 12K. The whole point of those higher resolutions is so for the fact of downsampling. So you can shoot in stuff like 8K. You can shoot in stuff like 4K without cropping in on the sensor because of the sensor technology they're using that nobody else is doing right now. They're giving you a rare opportunity to, to shoot at lower resolutions so you're not having to shoot at these higher capacities. Uh, but those higher resolutions, if for some reason you need it, is there. But really the point, if you've ever shot on the Ursa 12K, um, the whole point of those cameras is not necessary to shoot at 12K. The whole point of those cameras is to give you high property resolution options and then and using the sensor technology to also help you with rolling shutter as well as giving you high frame rate options. So to me, that's sort of the thing. They're not really designed for those 17K things. They're really designed to help you get better qualities in terms of 8K and 4K deliveries. And then we also got to talk about that this is a 65 millimeter camera. So they're basically competing with Aerie and IMAX. In fact, Blackmagic didn't even mention the price of this camera. This camera, they're basically like, we haven't set the price yet. We're sort of figured it out. But either way, that if they do set a price on that, where you can purchase it, depend, now obviously it's depending on where it will sit, but that alone could change up the industry. Now we'll have to see how you know truly high-end productions and high-end DPs will look at this. But this that alone could really shake up the industry. And if you don't understand why, I'll explain it to you here. 65 millimeter format has, is, is something that isn't really accessible for a lot of people. And more importantly, it's not something that you can even purchase if you're not even a rental house or somebody on rental list, a rental house that is on the list of, say, an IMAX or an Aerie. Because like the Alexa 65, that is a camera that has been used in Dune and Joker and a lot of high-end production that have been brought out beautiful cinematography. And, but you can't purchase that. You have to actually rent it from Ari in order to get that camera. You can't buy it. The same thing with IMAX, IMAX cameras. You can't just buy it unless you're, you know, James Cameron, then IMAX will just happen to give it to you because, hey, you make a billion dollars every single year, movie you drop. So we're good with you just doing that. We're going to make money anyway. The accessibility of, high, of just of that type of camera is already limited. And it's even more limited in the fact that you can't even purchase it. So you really have to work through various rental houses. And, I, and obviously, rental houses are still going to be the key priority for this camera. But individual DPs who will be able to afford this camera, they're going to have such an incredible investment opportunity, an opportunity to really get some beautiful shots that they can choose without having to you know, go to a third party if need be. They can have it in their hands. It's still going to be very, very exclusive because I'm almost certain it's probably going to be like $30,000. And I know, again, that may seem a lot, but then look at the cameras that are $30,000. You know, the Red V Raptor, the Burano. I know it's $25,000, but it's sort of closer in that price range. Um, the, you know, uh, you probably got to use Ari Alexa, uh, Alexa Mini, the classic Alexa Mini. Uh, you probably got to use the Venice G1. But those are, again, all of those cameras are full frame or Super 35 cameras. They all are very good, very high quality cameras. But to think that, again, I, we don't know what the price is. It could even be higher, it could be lower, or it could be lower. We don't know. Um, 
But the fact that something like that, that an IMAX level in terms of image aspect and things like that, is going to be available to some form of masses, that is an industry changing thing. And that is, going, that is to me going to shake up the industry. And I think this is a very coy play by Black Magic to really try to, they've been, they've been trying to bang at the doors of Hollywood for years. And I think they're getting inching closer and closer. Um, I'm definitely, I definitely know I'm not gonna be able to get that, but I might be able to get the uh, Ursa Cinema 12K. And that to me will already be enough of a camera. I don't need to go to IMAX yet, but I know if I have to, I can always, I can always rent it and then maybe and be able to cut it with uh, something like an Ursa 12K or even the Pixis because they're all full frame and they'll be able to intercut with each other. These are my thoughts on the Ursa Cinema cameras, the 12K and the 17K. I would love to know what you guys think. Let me know, leave your comments down below, and as always, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and until next time.